Ever since Apple introduced their line of CPUs, starting from their M1 chips, everyone has been raving about their performance, especially on laptops. Now we have M2 and M3 chips. I would say the two biggest complaints with these laptops are first, the lack of ports, and then the limitation of only being able to connect one external monitor. In this video, I'm gonna talk about how this dock solves all those issues. Let's get into it. Now, even though we seem to be working in a mobile world with everyone having their laptops, there are many of us who want to connect our laptops to a home environment with multiple monitors and all our peripherals ready to go. My name is Patrick and this is Everyday Tech. Everyday Tech for Everyday People. And today we're talking about this dock station from Mini Supru. This is the Upgrade DisplayLink Triple Monitor Docking Station. Now, full disclosure, Mini Supru did reach out to me and ask me if I'd take a look at this docking station. Although they did send this to me for free, they're not seeing this video before it goes up. All my opinions are my own. So let's take a tour around this dock and I'll show you a demo of hooking up three monitors to this docking station. This is a 15 port docking station, but it doesn't mean you can use all the ports at the same time. Now, once we get to the back of the dock, I'll explain why. But let's start with the front of the dock and we'll be going from left to right. The first thing we'll see is this power button and indicator light which I really don't like. It's too easy to turn off this entire dock with the press, press of a button, no matter what is attached to it. Now for me, I don't mind having a power button, but you can't make it that easy to press. Then we have the 3.5 millimeter audio slash mic jack. I personally love having these, especially in the front of the dock to easily hook up things like headphones. Then we have both a SD and a micro SD card slot. Then the next three ports are USB-A ports. They're USB-A 3.0 and support up to five gigabits a second speed. Now these first two are data only and the third one supplies 7.5 watts of charge. Then we have two USB-C ports, which are probably 3.1 Gen 2 ports because they do support up to 10 gigabits. These ports can supply up to 45 watts of charge if you're only using one at a time and then 22 watts for each port if both are being used at the same time. Now, when we get to the back, we get to the area of why you would even consider getting a dock like this, the number of display options. Now, going from left to right again, we have the DC input. This comes with a 140 watt adapter. Now, the 140 watt adapter is not only used to power up the unit itself, but also power up whatever is connected to it as well. So next we have the USB-C port where you can connect them to the main host computer. And in my case, the M1 MacBook Air. This can power and charge a laptop up to 85 watts. Remember, this is where all the data is coming into the computer from this one cable. So we're talking about all the peripherals, data coming from the ethernet port, and even the displays. Now I'll speak a moment about the data speeds in a moment. And next to the USB-C port, you'll have the gigabit ethernet ports as well. But now we come to the different ways we can connect to displays. So you have three groups that are labeled display one, display two, and display three. Now display one and two run off the display link protocol, which required drivers or the display link app to be running on your computer. Now you can either plug in via display port or HDMI, but not both for a single display at the same time. Now each of the display groups doesn't require to be in the same, the same as the other. So in other words, you could mix and match between display port and HDMI between the different groups. And then the display three is just a regular HDMI port. For me, I put my main monitor on display three as it doesn't require to go through software to make it work. But in practice, I don't think this really makes too much of a difference. Now, before I show you a demo of hooking up monitors to this dock, let's talk about transfer speeds and connection protocols. Now, to be clear, this dock does not is not a Thunderbolt 3 or 4 dock, although you can plug it into a Thunderbolt 3 or 4 port. For example, my CalDigit TS3 Plus is a Thunderbolt 3 dock that supports up to 40 gigabits of transfer. Now, of course, I don't have a single device that can use that much bandwidth, such as a Thunderbolt 3 storage enclosure but I do have a bunch of peripherals and things plugged into it. And I like to know that my dock can handle 
and have enough bandwidth to handle all those devices plugged into it. Now, the Mini Supru has a much smaller throughput than the CalDigit. Now, the question is, will we be able to see a difference in performance, and can the Mini Supru handle all the different displays and things plugged into it? Now, the main reason to get this dock, of course, is the ability to use up to three external displays. Now, any M-series MacBook that doesn't have the word Pro or Max attached to it can only drive up to one external display. Of course, we're using DisplayLink technology. Two of the three displays are using DisplayLink, and then the third one is just using HDMI. The two DisplayLink ones can use DisplayPort or HDMI, uh, one or the other, but not both at the same time. This does support up to 4K60 on all three monitors. Unfortunately, I don't have any 4K monitors to test this out, but I do have a 35-inch ultra-wide monitor here, then I have a 15.6 portable monitor here. And then I have my trusty old ASUS 24-inch monitor. Now, these two monitors are using HDMI. This one is attached to the non-Display Link one. And then this one is will be using DisplayPort. So I'm going to attach them one by one. You need to have the Display Link software already installed on your computer and running. So I already have it running. First, we're going to attach the ultrawide monitor here. We turn this on and we will see another display show up on our computer screen here. And remember our MacBook Air here is also the screen here is another, another display. So we're going to have up to four displays here. Next, I'm going to attach the ultra, the portable monitor here, plug in the USB-C, plug in the HDMI here. And now we have another external display here. This one is using DisplayLink. And lastly, we're going to hook up our ASUS monitor here using DisplayPort. Turn this off. And now we have three external displays, four displays all together. And I did do some stress tests to this. I ran four different YouTube videos at full screen and there was no hitch at all. I do have an Ethernet cable attached to this dock. I ran a speed test at the same time that all those videos were playing, and I didn't. there was no hitch at all. So the performance of this dock is awesome. So we can see everything is working perfectly. Now remember, my main monitor is running through HDMI, but the other two displays are running through HDMI and DisplayPort, but running through a software layer just using DisplayLink. But as far as transfer speeds are concerned, I was getting very similar performances using my Samsung T7 SSD drive. Again, this is not Thunderbolt, so all the data is going into my MacBook Air through a 10 gigabit connection. Now in real world everyday use, I feel you won't really see a slowdown at all. Now if you really need that much throughput and speed, let's say you have a Thunderbolt drive, just connect it into the other open Thunderbolt port or get a different dock. But really you're getting this dock for the ability to connect more than one external monitor. Now this is not only made possible because of the display link protocol, but this is also made possible in my opinion because of the Apple, Apple silicone in my Mac. Now back in the day, I had an Intel MacBook Air and I tried to connect two 24 inch monitors, one using a display link adapter and the performance was just terrible. It was just too laggy. But after the release of the M1 Max, the performance has been flawless. So if you're looking for a good overall dock to connect all your peripherals to, this is a good option. But if you're looking for a dock that can connect up to two or three external monitors, this is a must have. Especially if you're not needing the horsepower of a MacBook Pro, but are wanting to hook up multiple monitors. So this is another great way to save some money. So for example, an entry-level MacBook Pro with an M3 Pro chip starts at $19.99. An entry-level MacBook Air with an M2 chip starts at $10.99. Now, the M3 Pro chip only supports up to two external displays. Now, that's a huge price difference, especially if you want the lighter and cheaper MacBook Air, but are only missing that external display support. Thanks to Mini Supuru for sending this out to me. Now, this is the second dock they've sent to me. The first one they sent to me was a Mac mini dock. Now all their products are very high quality and performed very well. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Consider hitting that subscribe button. Until the next one, 
See ya.